Hey there, it's Ben here, and here in this tutorial we're going to be having a look at how we create this effect where we move our presenter to different spots in the video. So essentially, sometimes when you're videoing a presenter on a green screen, you want to move them to the right and then back to the middle uh, once they've finished kind of talking about the stats or text or graphics that are up on screen. Um, and you want to do this without keyframes, because that's going to make it a lot quicker to actually move them back and forth throughout a presentation and it's going to save you a lot of time. There's a couple of things we're using in this video. The first is this uh, green screen that I've downloaded from a website called Pexels. Um, now Pexels is great, has a lot of free video footage that you can use. But if you're looking for some more professional video footage, then I definitely recommend Soundstripe. They just opened up their new video uh, service on their website. They have a lot of very useful video footage shot in 4K, shot in HD, different topics. So here we've got some business topics. Um, they've got a, a variety of different things on there. Soundstripe's definitely worth checking out um, for their new video stock footage. So the other thing we're going to use here as well is the BrettFX Power Tools plugin. So basically for the punch-in and also for the, the type that we're kind of placing up on the screen here, we're using BrettFX Power Tools a couple of the free features from that plugin and a couple of the pro features from that plugin. So I'll leave all the links below for Soundstripe and also for the BrettFX plugin so that you can dive in and have a look at those as well. So let's jump in and have a look at how we set this up. So we're gonna to go to File, New and Project. So set up a brand new timeline. We'll call this presentation Zoom Presenter and we'll set this up at 1080p, 1920 by 1080 at 30 frames per second and we'll click OK. So now we have a brand new blank timeline. So the first thing we're going to do is drop this video down onto our timeline and we will just do Shift and Z to stretch that out so we can kind of see the whole timeline. So we've got a, a short uh, and silent presenter here, so just the, the kind of video footage um, of this presenter. And really what we want to think about is where we want this presenter to be when the video is finished. So where do we want to position them in relation to the type that's going to come up on screen? So in this video we're kind of pointing across to our left, her right, and essentially we want to kind of move her across to the, the right for most of the video when the text is up on screen. And, what, so we're, and that's where we're going to set the positioning up here. So we're going to come up to the, the top right here and I'm going to change the position. So we're changing the X position here and we'll just leave our presenter across the right there. We want to make sure she doesn't cross the edge of the screen. And that's really the main thing that we need to do up in our inspector here. So if you don't see the inspector, just go to Window, Show in Workspace, and check the inspector. And that will bring the inspector up. You want to be in the Video tab, so the first tab here of the inspector. And I'm just dragging across the X position there to change it. Although you can come down to the middle here and use the Transform properties um, to also just kind of move this to the left and right. Now with this is a little danger you might kind of move up or down and you definitely don't want to move up because we're going to leave a, a kind of sharp line there at the edge of that. So I'm going to drop this back down so it snaps to the middle and now if we turn this off we have our position set up here at 483.5 and 0 0.3. I'm just going to change that back to 0. And so there's a couple of different ways in which you can change the position there. So now we're going to jump in and have a look at the, the punch-in and how this is going to work. So essentially, we're sort of using the punch-in in reverse here. We're using it to zoom in to a clip that's already been moved to a particular point on the screen. So we're going to come into the BrettFX Power Tools. We're going to scroll up and we're going to scroll up to the top here. And we're looking for the, the punch-in um, option here. So we've got this punch-in option and we're going to drag this down to the timeline. And essentially, this is going to punch right in way too high for us. So we're just going to zoom out a little bit. So we'll zoom in here. And we've got the option here as well to change the X position and the Y position. So we can reposition our presenter. So we've got our presenter kind of basically positioned in the middle here. And then when our presenter starts to talk about what's on screen, she's going to zoom out to the left there and continues to talk about what's happening. I'm just going to change the X position here. We're moving a little bit too close to the edge there. So we'll come back in here and actually we're going to just select the punch in again and we're going to zoom out a little bit more. So we're going to come to our scale and we'll just change this to 150 and we're going to oh, just holding down the Alt key here to move these numbers a little bit more slowly. And we can also use the sliders to move things as well. 
and we can use the up and down cursor here too to kind of move our X position as well. That's looking good. So we just wanna make sure her hands don't run off screen at any point in time. And now we're coming to that zoom there. So if we shorten this, our zoom is gonna move as we shorten and lengthen it, which is the nice thing about using this punch in rather than keyframing uh, the zoom on this as well. But the, the punch in plugin works really nicely. So that's gonna zoom out. And now we can pop our text on. So if we come up to our BrettFX power tools, we're gonna to scroll down and we've got our overshoot list text. So basically this text is gonna pop up on screen when she's talking about it. And then we're gonna come back and we'll let that hold on screen for a little bit. And then it's gonna animate off and then we'll duplicate our punch in. So I'm holding down the option key and duplicating that. And again, that's the nice thing about these punch in layers is that basically we don't need to do any keyframing. We can just duplicate the original punch in and it's gonna then come back to the middle and we'll get our lady back in the middle. So with the, the punch in at the start here, you can see we're kind of zooming in at the start, which we don't want. So I'm gonna change the zoom in so that's turned off, so it's already going to be zoomed in. So now we start at the beginning of our presentation here. Move to our list. Talk about the list. We can obviously modify the text and everything there. And then we zoom back out. So if we come in here and then turn off the zoom out, once we get to the end of our presentation, we're not gonna zoom out again. So we don't get that kind of funny zoom out at the end. So obviously if this is a longer clip, then we can organize this a bit differently, but you can see how we can really easily kind of duplicate these. So we'll just do a quick example and zoom out along a timeline. So when you have a longer presentation, it's really easy to kind of edit these, modify the duration and have your presenter timing really nice in sync with the, the text that pops up on screen. So obviously we've got a green screen here, we are not using it. So we do wanna use that. We'll just turn off the zoom out here. So we're gonna select our video. We're gonna come across to our effects here and we are gonna jump in to our keys. So we'll come down to our keying here, drag our keyer onto here and pretty nice green screen apart from a few of the edges. So what we're gonna do is in addition to the green screen, we're gonna do a quick fix for these edges using the masks. And we'll use in particular the draw mask, so we'll drag this on. And essentially we're gonna just kind of keep an eye on where her hands are, so the furthest out her hands come. And I'm just gonna draw around here. We'll zoom out to 100% here so we can catch the edge. And basically, that's gonna allow us to remove with the mask this kind of white that was there before. So you can see with the draw mask turned off, we have this little bit of white fringing around there. And with it turned on, we've got rid of that. I'm just gonna give this a little bit of a feather just in case there's any other little bits of white in there. So it's a bit of a gradient between those two elements. So, We've got our green screen knocked out. And the next step is to have a look at how we add a background in here. So essentially, we wanna pop a background in behind here. And there's a couple things to, to think about here. So we're gonna do this in two ways. Uh, I'm gonna demonstrate something that can go wrong when you set these things up. So we'll go to our textures. We are gonna grab this industrial texture. And I'll just drop this over here. And I'm gonna copy and then use option and paste, option and V to paste in this layer. So now we have this lady in front of our industrial background, which looks great. And if we take these three bits of text and duplicate these up here, you can see the punch in is gonna zoom in to the background as well, which isn't always gonna work um, perfectly. So you can see the, the background there 
we're seeing a bit of the, the edge here. And you may want that. You may want to jump in, look for where the edge is, and then maybe increase the scale of your background. Oh, actually, we can't even do that. So basically, because the edge of the video is there, we're going to get that edge on our background. We don't want that. So let's fix that. Um, I'm going to copy this and use Option and Paste to paste it here. So Option and Paste, paste it on a layer, on the, on the topmost layer. And now with this layer set up, obviously we can't see the video now because it's at the top. We can come up to our inspector again and we're going to change the blend mode to behind. So we'll come down almost all the way to the bottom and select behind. And you can see now that pushes that layer behind all of our video layers. So now that's going to stay intact. We zoom our presenter, but not the background, which works pretty well. So we have a nice kind of vignette around that as well. And the kind of lighting works pretty well for our presenter. And for that kind of quick setup, uh, things are looking pretty good. So I'm going to delete this second half. That's no good. And so this is kind of the final result of what we've, we've ended up with. So we talk away and then we point to our list on our list here. And then we jump back in when our presenter looks back to the camera and away we go. And obviously we can repeat that same process through a much longer um, presentation as well. One last thing that you may find useful um, if you're not looking for this particular color of background um, is that we can obviously add our color corrections on here as well. So a simple one for this would be to colorize it. And then we can select, you know, a color that matches our branding a bit better. And we can also pick colors that are close to one another. So we end up with less of a kind of intense background. We can add blur effects and stuff like that to it um, as well. And obviously we can come in and modify um, our text as well. So we can change our list items to whatever we want and modify all that. So that's a really kind of quick overview of having a look at how we, we set this up. There's different ways of making lists in Final Cut Pro 10. Obviously we use the, the BrettFX plugins here. Um, in the BrettFX Power Tools plugin, if we scroll up, uh, the punch-in is part of the, the free version. So if you've got your own method of setting up your text, then you can just kind of grab the free version of that. Um, and then there's some other very cool uh, kind of options in here. And then the animated list um, is part of the, the pro pack. And there's a kind of bunch of other different uh, hang tags, which are a really cool plugin that BrettFX has created. Um, and then also some speech bubbles and stuff like that. I would definitely recommend the, the pro version. Um, but the free version also has some super cool stuff in there as well. If you have any questions about this tutorial or anything else in Final Cut Pro 10, then please do leave a comment below. Otherwise, I will see you on the next video and good luck with your edits.